So I'm talking here, I lean back over here, you're still gonna see me in frame. I point over here, done. What's going on guys? Uh, I just got everything set up in my new house. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I just moved to Anoka, uh, bought a house with my wife. Um, my office is a mess right now, so I'm not even gonna flip the camera around because there's boxes everywhere, I don't have anything organized. I've only been here a few days, or four or five days, I guess. But um, I have not all set up the monitors, the setup, so to speak. Um, got all my hard drives ready to go, servers figured out. And uh, one of the first things I wanted to do, the one of the things I promised you guys was I wanted to go over the Under Armour suit that I used in the last four, five trips out west. Um, as of now, between the base layer stuff to the heaviest of warm stuff, I've used it from 75 and sunny where like I'm crazy sweating to you know about seven, eight degrees and like a 15 mile an hour wind. So I've had a really good chance to go pretty much from warm to cold in this suit and the layers and how they work together. And for the very first time, I've never, I've never really thought there was a ton of technology behind how you manage your body heat, how you manage, how you layer, all that, <coughs> all that stuff. So I want to go over that and that's what we're going to do in this video. So before we do that, let's, uh, let's look at some B-roll from the last few trips. <laughs> Okay, so I started off hunting um, antelope in North Dakota. Um, it was for a foundation I was shooting for. It was a really cool organization. In fact, I will link um, in the description below, uh, link to the YouTube channel and what they do. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be a part of it in the last probably four or five months. They take young, uh, young adults up to, I think, age 24, 25 um, on hunts of a lifetime. And, and all these adults have, have or have had life-threatening illnesses. So anything from cancer to... Um, I mean, amputations to tumors to, I mean, the, the list goes on and on of, of the amazing stories that, that these kids and what they've gone through and, and that's where organizations helped them out and, and bought them from fishing trips to like on Lake of the Woods. I shot one earlier this year that was like that. And then all the way to bull elk hunting in uh, North Dakota as well, which might be the biggest bull elk in North Dakota shot um, at this time, at least this season, because there's only so many herds in North Dakota. So We'll go into it later, but um, I have to kind of take everything apart because I did store it up a couple days ago uh, when I got back from my trip. So let me get some of this stuff out first. Uh, let's go with this one here. So uh, I'm going to first start with the light jacket, so to speak. So this is a non-hood. It's pretty lightweight. It's wind, uh, wind and water resistant, um, but more than anything, it's more of like, again, your, your base layer that you'd put underneath your uh, performance shirt. So a lot of people already know, and I'm not really going to detail that, that you would have a base layer performance shirt, a wiki material. There's a ton of them out there. Under Armour makes some as well. I just happen to be using a different one. And that'll uh, whisk the moisture away from your body when you start to sweat to an over layer, which I have around here somewhere. I'll have to grab it later. Um, that's more like a cotton that'll absorb that. And then this is your first actual serious layer. So um, first thing that like I'll talk about is the camel. I don't, and I'm not going to pretend that I am some big Western hunter who knows what they're doing. I, I'll tell you exactly what my experience has been and the only three or four, five trips I've been out there, uh, but what it's kind of compounded to be. Uh, most hunting that I've done up until these trips has all been in Northern Minnesota, um, at least for, you know, big game, uh, bow hunting and you walk out to a stand, um, you, you, you usually sweat or get warm on the way there. You sit and stand, you're fine for the first half an hour, hour, and then start to get cold because you're not moving, right? Your body's not moving. And so ideally, you want to bring layers with you and kind of put them on when you get to the stand to conserve that body heat. And then, uh, but every guy two hours into a hunt when they're bow hunting is like, okay, I'm cold now. And that's just the nature of it because you're not moving, right? Uh, so all of the reviews and kind of thoughts and uh, I've had on gear has been based on that motto. You, you, bought, you have body heat and then you slowly lose it and then you go so you can't really stand it anymore. So this was a different thing for me, um, this Western hunting, because you're constantly moving. Uh, we're talking about from public to private going up and down mountain ranges. I mean, uh, maybe not mountains per se, but hills that feel like mountains. Hills that'll take you an hour and a half just to climb up. If there's no direct route. Sometimes you're going vertical and feel like you're climbing a rock climb wall. Sometimes it's a nice, easy go, but regardless, you're always moving. Uh, so this was the, the jacket I would wear 
in terms of um, a base layer when it was relatively warm out, you know, those days that were 75, I'd wear like a, a wicking chair underneath it and then just this. Um, and this, what it proved to be is, is again, just that camo. And like I said, I'm not an, an expert on camo. There's a ton of really good brands out there. The more and more I get into this hunting side of things, I realize how many companies out there make unbelievable camos. So I'm not gonna sit here and say this is the best. I will say this, the people that I was with every single trip, every single trip made it a point to, to comment how well I blended in. And I think a lot of it is because I was in that, you know, North, uh, uh, Western North Dakota and South Dakota and then into Wyoming, Montana, I did a trip as well. And then this last trip in Colorado, a um, couple times a trip, whoever I was swimming with would make a comment like, dude, you blend in like crazy. Like it's ridiculous. Like everywhere you go down, you're blended in. It's really, really well hidden, which for a camera guy is great because obviously we're the ones that have to be moving a little bit more and moving the camera around and trying to find an angle or, or whatever it may be. But that's the one thing I will say about this camo is it's definitely more of a digital, it's not earth tone where you're talking about like leaves and branches and stuff like that. It reminds me almost like an army camel, so to speak. I don't know if there's a correlation, but uh, people commented that there's really large sections of it and that's why it broke up the ground behind you so well. So A plus in the camel, I was really, really happy with that. Um, and not just from my opinion, because I thought it looked cool, but like from other people telling me, right? So this jacket, uh, it fit really well. That's one thing on Under Armour's I've noticed is there's a lot of manufacturers out there. And again, I haven't tried them all, but Everything fit really well. Um, I am probably about six foot tall, about 160 pounds, give or take. And uh, yeah, 160 pounds. I don't know why I stuttered there. It's straight up 160 pounds. I, I'm not a big dude. I don't have time to hit a gym or anything like that, so I don't really care about it. Um, but this suit is uh, is the large and it fit me really well. And I, it fits like it, I don't know how to, t how to say it, but like it, it fits around the sections you'd want to. It feels more like a performance jacket, like you'd want in something you're about to go work out in or something versus you know, just a hunting jacket that's a big bulky layover, so to speak. So um, without actually putting you in the suit or trying it on, I don't know how else I describe you the fit, but it felt great. And it felt like I was about to freaking, like, you know, I could perform. I was like, I wasn't restricted or anything. So that was really cool. So after that, after this one, um, the pants were, the pants were awesome. The pants were like wearing a freaking awesome pair of jeans. Like, again, it's that, that fit. They felt comfortable. They didn't feel like a hunting pant. Hunting pants you think of, you walk around, you whoosh, 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 and it's just all kinds of, you know, noise and crazy or whatnot. It's inevitable that when you have, uh, you know, material that's supposed to keep you warm, it's going to be bulkier. But with these pants, um, I didn't really notice that. I didn't really notice that they were something that I had to, you know, worry about my legs swishing together when we were trying to stalk an animal, or uh, I had to worry about them being too noisy or bulkier. They just, uh, they fit really well, almost like a pair of jeans. Again, camel's the same thing. They have this like rib section in the knees. It kind of contours your knees as it bends. Um, I can't really say, I honestly don't know if it's for like performance, like so it's more durable, there's more like material there, or if it's just to fit your knee and movement or both, I don't know. Um, it just, it, it's interesting and, and I, 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 and I didn't dislike it. In fact, most of the people that commented on my suit commented on this section of it because I would put this suit in other people um, and have them try it on and wear it out while I was taking pictures of them and such. Um, depending on what size they were, I only had so many with me. So I would uh, I would put them in the suit, take their picture, and that's one of the first things I talked about, this rib knee section. So again, the pockets, the seams, everything just felt right. Um, I don't really think that I could come up with a ton of things that I would change on something like this. Uh, and again, this is their bottom layer stuff. This is their early to mid season. Um, so let's go up from here. Now I'll go to the, uh, the Windstopper jacket. So this is your outer jacket that I put over the jacket I just showed you. Uh, it's got a hood on it. It's the full ensemble. It's a little bit thicker. Um, definitely meant for, you know, to stop that wet rain and water. This is a Gore-Tex jacket. And I don't know if anyone's really been able to come out and say, I'm sure a lot of people have mentioned or tried to say or whatever, but that, that their material or their technology is better than Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex, whenever I see Gore-Tex from the fishing side of things, and I can relate it over to the hunting as well, between boots, rain gear, whatever you want to say, is like a golden standard. So I'm sure maybe there is something better than Gore-Tex out there, but for now, if I see Gore-Tex, I'm pretty much convinced that it's the best stuff out there in terms of water resistance. Um, but, you know, breathability is a huge thing there. Uh, some people say Gore-Tex is the best waterproof and breathability at the same time. Um, absolutely. Now, if I had a jacket like this that breathed better but wasn't water resistant, on the days that it was just cold I knew it wasn't going to rain at all, I would have probably worn it. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a downside towards it. Uh, again, there are some times where I'm crawling on the ground. There's a lot of times it was cold in the morning, so there'd be frost. And I'd be thankful I had water resistance because I was going on my knees constantly and on my elbows constantly. So the fact that this was Gore-Tex was super handy. Um, again, same kind of thing. Uh, 
it was just comfortable. I don't really know how to describe it. It wasn't like an average hunting jacket that you felt like you were a bear walking around in. And even some of the thinner stuff, I just have always found, I've never been really happy in one. This is the first that I've actually been really happy with. So um, going from there, uh, one of the cool things I'll, I'll point out too is, is inside the pockets is their drawstring. So this is in all three of the jackets that I have, the bottom layer, this mid one, and then the, the top layer for the, the cold stuff. They have these straps on the inside here. So you pull that and that tightens your drawstring and which is you know kind of cool whatever and then i got to be plenty tight at first i didn't like care for because it, it was always something in my pocket i thought it was like keys or something like that or i kept thinking like, oh what's in my pocket then i realized like if you start really tightening one for a guy like me that wears a large jacket i'm not very big i would tighten it quite a bit and to have all that slack whipping around on the outside of your jacket or have to worry about tucking it in somewhere would be a pain and especially when you're trying to be quiet um, camera guys have movements that more movements than the average hunter does because yes the hunter has to get in position pull back whatever but when it comes down and they're in position if the animal moves they can just pivot I have to sometimes get around the other side of them I have to be pretty quiet so having all the drawstrings on the inside of your pockets was actually kind of cool um, and that's again in the top on the mid layer the bottom layer one and the uh, the top layer poofy jack which I'll bring on in a second um, all of them have that so super cool again just fit really well uh, let's go from there. Um, I here's a hat. I wore this hat for the second and or the second to last and the last shoot I was on. It's just a thick, I think half wool, half acrylic, something other polyester um, hat. It was nice. I mean, it was a solid wool heavy hat. They're heavy, which I liked, and it was warm. Um, I mean, it's not a camera or anything. I thought it looked cool, and I'm not gonna say it's the best in the world because it's just a hat. But it was a good addition, so to speak. Uh, now I'm gonna talk about the thing I was most impressed by. So. This is their, um, I think mid to late they call it, maybe they just call it their late season jacket. And uh, the jacket and pants, so to speak. Now this thing, uh, when you put it on, you feel like a marshmallow man. So, which is, I hate to say it because it sounds like bad, like it's a negative connotation, but I don't think it is. Uh, maybe it is, I don't know. So it definitely, you know, you have, to, you have to exchange what's the difference between staying active and being able to like, you know, not be bulky and, and whatnot versus staying warm. Uh, when I had long johns on, undergarments, and those three layers, or those two layers with the pants, whatever, and we're sitting there and it's 10 degrees out in the morning and we're not moving, you're going to get cold. Those aren't warmth layers. They're meant to be able to control your body heat, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, if you want an over jacket, if you're just sitting in a stand, this would definitely be the way to go. Uh, I've put this suit on two different people, and both times they were like blown away with it. And, and, and likewise, I. It's, it, whatever they have inside of here, I'm sure there's some technology name for it. Again, I don't know. I'm not gonna claim that I, this is an Under Armour hat or anything. I just, it was warm. It was like, the only thing I could compare it to, if I'm being 100% honest, is my striker suit. Uh, that suit has whatever kind of technology that's pants and bibs that you put it on, and it, let's say you just try it on at a buddy's house, you put it on instantly in the room, you start feeling warm. Within a minute or two, you realize that your body heat is not escaping. And that's what this top and bottom layer did. So. Um, the bottom layer, again, the pants felt nice, they're fit, they weren't really baggy and flopping around, they felt nice to your, uh, to your, uh, your pants and your legs. And this top jacket was just the same kind of thing, it was bigger. All of these jackets were largest. And that's another thing with pointing out, a lot of times it's hard when you go cross brand, right? You buy a large one, large another, and they're all different sizes. Well, when you can shop with one thing that has kind of all the platforms you need, I'm convinced, and maybe this is false or whatever, but I'm convinced that they designed the largest to be incremental to their own product. So for example, that large mid-layer jacket that was Gore-Tex fit really well over the inside layer jacket that was just the, with no hood. And this felt really, really good on top of those two layers. So I think they're made to be staggered like that because if you had the exact same size that would fit a large guy with just a t-shirt on, then by layering you would absolutely, you'd, 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 eventually you'd, get, you'd be like skin tight, you, you couldn't do it. So I think, if I'm guessing, just from wearing the suit, that they actually, uh, made the sizes a little bit bigger for laying purposes. That might be a common thing in the hunting industry, and that might be just like sound really stupid right now, but again, I'm not an expert. I don't claim to be an expert. I just thought I noticed it, so I would say something about it. Um, the pockets, same thing. They have that drawstring. Um, they're, they actually have these little like, they're like an, an extra layer of pad or poof in there when you put your hands in. So when your hands in your pockets, it like compresses around so no air is getting in, and it really warms up your hands. I was just, again, I was blown away how warm this suit was. And I only had to wear this the last two hunts because it was that cold on the last two hunts. But uh, again, I was very impressed and I don't think that the suit I would have had by itself would have been warm enough um, unless I was constantly moving. So 
That is the third and final layer. Uh, the last thing I'm going to touch on, and I'm just really throwing all these things on the ground here, uh, is something that I've never experienced as a hunter. And what I mean, I'm not trying to make that like a big statement, but it's true. The hunting I've done, like I said earlier, has all been the bow hunting. You walk out, you sit in a stand. Maybe if you're sitting all day, you get out and walk around a little bit, or you get up and you got to shake a little bit. But you always feel guilty for doing it because you're supposed to be quiet. Um, Western hunting is completely different. And as a novice, I've never done it before. Uh, again, I'm not really hunting, I'm just shooting people hunt, but it's the same exact walks, right? In fact, I'm, if anything, I'm carrying more gear. Um, I've never had to deal with body climate control, warmth control. Uh, a little bit in ice fishing when I did a lot of backpack stuff, but it wasn't the same. And I, they're, you're not talking about the distances, you're not talking about the altitude, you're not talking about the dryness of the air, whatever. It's a little different. So what I did is I found myself by the end of probably the second hunt realizing that wearing one layer or a accumulation of layers wasn't realistic for what we were doing because we would walk up a hill stalking an animal which is hands knees crawling it's awkward positions your body's working really hard we stop at the hill and wait for these deer or animal or whatever it was to move and then we get cold sitting there so eventually i had to realize that it's about your all your body's always going to be warm to a certain point it's always going to be giving off heat now when you're sitting still it might be a little bit less when you're moving around a lot hiking up and down a hill it's going to be a lot more so to take layers on and off and to use the layers to which they're supposed to be almost to conserve heat. For example, um, if I know that we just rested for lunch and I'm kind of cold, right? And that we're going to um, hike up a hill or whatnot. I'm not going to, I'm cold. I'm not going to instantly put my stuff on in like three layers or whatever, or two layers. And no, no one, we're going to go hike. I'm going to say, I'm only going to put the one on because I know in five, six minutes when I'm sweating and I'm panting or whatever, because I'm out of shape, that's the layer I'm going to want on. I'm not going to stop for it. So I would actually start planning out based on our roots. Now, you can never expect, obviously, you have to go chase an animal on a whim or whatever. You can't really expect that. But I found myself trying to, because I'm a very analytical person that way. Like, uh, I, there's depth to a sport that way. When you can be thinking about, like, oh, well, what can I do this to make it even better? And everyone loves doing that. And that's great. But I found myself actually trying to plan out and what performance piece was going to be best for the next half an hour I was doing. Um, was I going to end up getting really cold? If I, was I was I just starting to do a short walk and I know we're going to rest for a while, i quickly throw on the big layer, conserve what little body heat I could during that next 300 yards, and I'd be sitting there just on the brink of being a little warm, and I'd conserve that heat for freaking another 45 minutes. So for the first time, I was actually thinking in a layer format, and I've never really done that before. And what this suit has to offer from its base layer all the way to the end of the most, you know, the, the heaviest jacket, the late season, uh, if you're thinking about it while you're doing these walks, hikes, weights, whatever you want to call them, stocks, uh, you're going to be a lot more comfortable. And when you're doing a full day from sunup to sundown and you're eating granola bars and drinking from a bladder pack, uh, being comfortable is a big deal. It lets you enjoy those moments a little bit better. So again, I can promise you I'm not being paid to say this. Under Armour is not going to be sending me a check for making a YouTube video in my office about this gear. I just had a lot of people reach out to me and ask about how I liked it. Well, obviously people were interested. And so um, I told them I would make a little review of it. So uh, throughout this whole thing, I've hoped that I've plugged in some B-roll or some Yutaki and actually in action in the field of give you a little reference what I was doing. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will leave the links to this gear below in case you wanna look at yourself in terms of the actual specs and like technologically, actual specs and like technologically, technologically, technology, that was a fail all the technological stuff behind it because when I cut the tags off, yes, there was a note card full of stuff and I'm sure there's even more information there than I ever touched on or could touch on that if someone really wants to know what this suit consists of, they're gonna wanna dig into it. So uh, yeah, without furthermore, that's the first review on the Under Armour.